Welcome back to another discussion on The Lord's Recovery Unchained. This video is the last video in our five-part series testing Witness Lee's teaching of the two trees in the Garden of Eden. Since there are over two hours of detailed content in the previous four videos, in this last video we'll just take a step back to summarize and trace the steps of Lee's errors and present some concluding thoughts. So Witness Lee taught the Tree of Life was the center of the Garden of Eden, but Witness Lee was wrong because the Bible shows both trees were in the center. Since Witness Lee taught the tree of life was the only tree in the center, he built upon that error and taught that God commanded man to only eat of that tree of life. But Witness Lee was wrong because the Bible shows that what God told Adam explicitly is that Adam was, quote, free to eat from any tree in the garden except for just one. So Witness Lee placed extreme restriction where God granted almost total freedom with just one simple restriction. Witness Lee took it further and taught that since God wanted man to only eat the tree of life, this meant that anything else man took in that was not the tree of life automatically meant it was death or of death or results in death. But Witness Lee was wrong because the Bible shows that there were many, many trees in the garden man had the freedom from God to eat that were not the tree of life but did not lead to death. So no, touching or eating things that are not the tree of life is not death and is not touching death. It is actual sin that leads to death, not anything that is not explicitly life. That leads to death. This particular error has direct impact on the lives of saints in the Lord's recovery because this principle that anything that is not life is automatically of death and results in death gets applied to all kinds of things in your life. Many saints have felt condemned over decades for the very normal, human, acceptable, enjoyable, non-sinful things in their life that they actually have full freedom from God to do, participate in, and derive pleasure and enjoyment from, but instead felt severe guilt, shame, and condemnation about because of this teaching of Witness Lee's that condemned them for doing things that were not purely of life or pure Christ. It is my sincere hope and goal that understanding this will begin to loosen the chains that bind many saints in this regard. Then Witness Lee took it even further and taught that the tree God forbid, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, was actually the tree of death and the source of death and that its very nature was death. But Witness Lee was wrong because the Bible shows that the tree was, quote, good for food and therefore that Adam and Eve did not die from anything found in the tree itself, but because God punished them by preventing them from eating of the tree of life, which, if they ate of it, would have made them live forever. And if you can't live forever, what happens? You die. This is where death came from, from God's punishment, not from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Since Witness Lee wrongly taught that the tree is death and that death came from the tree, in doing so he claimed that the tree was thus deceptively named and part of Satan's subtlety and concealment. But Witness Lee was wrong because the Bible shows that God himself created the tree and God himself also called it by that name when speaking to Adam. Witness Lee's teaching therefore paints the picture of a God who was also deceptive and malicious in using that name, while the Bible shows a God who was forthright with his creation and laid all the rules and information out from the get-go. Additionally, Genesis 3.22 shows that when Adam and Eve ate of the tree, they actually got the knowledge of good and evil from the tree, just like the name of the tree says, and just like God said. There was no deception sourced in the tree itself. Rather, it was the serpent's lie that they would not surely die that was the source of the deception. Witness Lee built upon all of these cumulative errors and claimed the shocking conclusions that knowledge, good, and evil are all therefore of death and bring in death. But as we saw, the Bible is clear that death didn't come from the tree, but from losing access to the tree of life. Therefore, knowledge, good, and evil are not of death. Death doesn't come from a tree. Rather, it is sin that results in God's punishment of death. 
Just like the Bible says, the wages of sin is death. Just like if you stole a pocket knife and your parents sent you to your room without dinner that night, doesn't mean that pocket knives are the source of hunger or that they are, quote, pocket knives of hunger. All of these deviations have produced in the local church the abhorrent proclamation that God doesn't care about good and evil, right and wrong, only life. But witnessly and the co-workers are wrong here too, because firstly, God himself did not act according to this principle in this very story, given that he cared so much about right and wrong, he cursed Adam and banned Adam and Eve from the tree of life and drove them out of the garden because he cares about right and wrong. And because secondly, the entire gospel is that God cares about right and wrong so much, he sacrificed his own son to satisfy his requirements of right and wrong that would otherwise result in our perishing. And because lastly, we looked at verse after verse from the Bible that shows without a doubt not that we shouldn't care about good or evil, but that we should be eager to do good and we should reject evil, and thus we actually should care about right and wrong, good versus evil, a lot. Since Witnessly wrongly taught that the tree of the knowledge of good and evil is the source of death, Witnessly went so far as to teach people that death is behind good, and that death is knowledge. He frightened and threatened those he taught that death is lurking even behind their own thoughts and their own good intentions. But Witnessly was wrong because the tree was not the source of death. Being cut off from the tree of life was the source of death. And the tree of the knowledge of good and evil was not poisonous or death, but rather was literally described as good for food. His teaching paralyzing you that death is everywhere chains you back up in the fear of death which is the very fear Christ died to free you from. Witnessly's teaching negates the sacrifice of God's Son. Since Witnessly taught that the two trees were two sources, one the source of life and the other the source of death, he also wrongly taught that these two trees represented two lines that wove throughout the Bible, the line of life and the line of knowledge. He taught that knowledge, good and evil, lead to death and the lake of fire, and life leads to the New Jerusalem. However, Witness Lee was wrong because the Bible says that it is good that leads to life and evil that leads to death and judgment. By scaring you about good and by telling you to reject good and by teaching that death is behind good, Witness Lee keeps you from good and therefore keeps you from the actual line of life. Witness Lee lumped good and evil together as both death as both being on the same tree and as both being things we should summarily reject. But the Bible says, Woe to those who call good evil and who call evil good, and I will repeat it again. Woe to those who do this. And rather than telling us to reject both good and evil like Witnessly taught, the Bible instead tells us to hold to what is good and reject evil only. Just because our knowledge and our good deeds aren't the requirements that satisfy God's righteousness doesn't mean we should outright reject them in the rest of our life when the Bible clearly tells us to still care very much for them. Witnessly taught that knowledge is death and that death is behind knowledge. He taught that good and evil are on the same tree and lumped them together that way. On a tree he called deceptive and death. However, Witness Lee was wrong because the Bible shows that knowledge is something positive, something we should strive for and have added to our faith. The Bible clearly shows that knowledge of and discernment of good and evil is unequivocally an attribute of mature believers, a characteristic of moral maturity, and something sober and weighty we should have, not something we should repudiate. Not having knowledge renders you an immature baby in Christ, wide open to stumbling and deception. Lastly, the abhorrent and dark teaching in the local church that God doesn't care about good or evil, right or wrong, only life, has been used as a wicked tool in the Lord's recovery to oppress and control people who speak up about serious evils and serious 
wrongs. Because the truth is, God cares about many things, not just life. One of those many things does indeed include caring about good and evil, right and wrong. God cares about the wounded, the brokenhearted, the victims, and that the right thing would be done in response to the wrongs perpetrated against them. It's a childish simplification and a misrepresentation of God to say that the only thing he cares about is, quote, life to the exclusion of anything else. And the thought that anyone who speaks up about the sins of those in the lead is automatically in the mind, on the line of knowledge, and in death has also been used to shut people up who rightfully speak up about their legitimate and reasonable concerns. In the precise situations in which any genuine Christian should gravely care about right and wrong, and in which any genuine Christian should not condemn truthful concerns as death knowledge, Wounded and bleeding saints have instead been told that they are in the realm of knowledge and that the God the local church believes in doesn't care about right and wrong and that the local church is not in the realm of right and wrong. And tragically, this has meant too many times and in too many situations that the actual wrong and evil thing is allowed to continue or is covered and protected under the guise of life, and the victim who is already unable to breathe from their pain and wounds is further victimized and discarded like they are worthless. When speaking up about the leadership is termed as an attack, which is what happens in the Lord's recovery, then the leadership is above accountability. This is not God's church. Because the leading ones in the local church paint as negative or poisonous and rail against anyone who has been treated this way who speaks up about it, those voices are silenced and kept in the dark as if none of this actually happens. But I am telling you it has happened to countless saints, and you would have to be naive and blinded to be made aware of Witness Lee's egregious errors in this teaching that permeate every aspect of these two chapters and not see how it is used and can be used to harm people, including you. And because this absurd teaching that the holy and righteous God who punishes our sins with death supposedly doesn't care about good or evil, right or wrong, is used to control and silence people, is used to cover darkness, evil, sin, and unrighteousness, and is used to inflict further harm upon wounded saints looking for protection, we get to call it out for what it is, a thought-stopping cliché and a spiritually abusive teaching. Thought-stopping clichés do exactly what their name implies, and they stop your thoughts in their tracks. But remember, if someone can control your thoughts, they control you. This teaching takes the weight of the Bible and the weight of the name of God, both of which are objects of authority for a Christian, and twists what the Bible says to unrecognizable levels, and then uses that twisted teaching to control you, your behaviors, and your thoughts. You express a thought or concern, and then you are shut down by being told you are, quote, in the mind, or you are, quote, in the wrong realm, or you are on the wrong tree. You see something truly wrong, and this shuts you down, condemning you that you shouldn't, quote, be in the realm of right and wrong. You point to the Bible to show that Witness Lee's teaching is wrong, and you are shut down and condemned and labeled as being, quote, in the realm of knowledge. You try to enjoy a new hobby, a new friendship, a new pursuit, and you feel as if you cannot enjoy them because they are not explicitly of life. And your behavior is controlled because of these ministry phrases, these cliches, that are 100% not of the Bible at all, as I've taken two solid hours over four videos to show you, but instead are a gross twisting of the Bible used to condemn you, shame you, and shut you down. Thought-stopping cliches are a known marker of unhealthy groups. They are a known marker, and Witness Lee's teaching on the two trees in the Garden of Eden is absolutely riddled with them. These deviations aren't innocent mistakes. You have to consciously ignore what the Bible says over and over again, in order to teach what Witness Lee taught, and in order to come to the conclusions he came to. And these things have been woven into your mind by your years in the local church and in the ministry, and they influence your behavior in ways you aren't even consciously aware of. This is how thought-stopping cliches work. 
This is how they are designed to work. This, saints and listeners, is one of the many reasons why the local church has been plagued with controversy for decades. Because those who have been in the Lord's recovery, as well as outsiders who observe the Lord's recovery, see these kinds of controlling, damaging, and utterly unbiblical things from the ministry, and they see how they are used with intention to control you, without your knowing and without your permission. This is one of the major markers, I am sorry to say, of a cult. Undue influence, behavior control, thought control, which occur under conditions of condemnation and fear. These tools are often used for such unchristian reasons as so the group's image can be protected rather than victims being protected and rather than the actual truth of situations being made known. Don't believe me? I'll use an example directly from the ministry and used directly on the saints themselves as admitted by Witness Lee to illustrate. In the collected works of Witness Lee, Witness Lee addresses a question about some turmoil and accusations concerning Watchman Nee. The question is concerning how to help saints who are discouraged, lose heart, and who fade away as a result of hearing things that may or may not have merit. Witness Lee's answer is regarding this turmoil about Watchman Nee and the church in Shanghai in the 1940s. He said this turmoil, quote, caused the church in Shanghai to close its doors and also caused Brother Nee to stop his ministry for six years. Witness Lee states in no uncertain terms that he himself was not fully clear concerning all the problems in the church in Shanghai at that time, and mentions that he returned to Shanghai around that time after recovering from a serious illness, during which he learned about the two trees, the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Here is where we see a real-life application of we don't care about right and wrong, only life. The saints questioned him, Brother Lee, do you believe that Brother Watchman Nee has never made any mistake? Keep in mind, this question is in light of actual turmoil and accusations concerning Watchman Nee. Witness Lee then rhetorically asks, what should my answer have been, yes or no, as if this is some kind of dilemma that should stump us, as if this question is a total head-scratcher. Well, it's certainly a strange quandary he traps himself in, because of course, without a doubt and without hesitation, his answer should have been no. The answer should have been no, of course I don't believe that Nee never made any mistake. If he's a human being, then he's made mistakes just like you and I do. And yet Witness Lee poses this rhetorical question to his readers as if a truthful reply is crazy. And Witness Lee skips over the inconvenient truth that he should not address what he already admitted he doesn't know about, and proceeds to apply his unbiblical interpretation, we don't care about right and wrong, just pay attention to the feeling of life, from the Garden of Eden story. Witness Lee's response was to ask the questioning saints how their spiritual life was before and after condemning Watchman Nee as being wrong in certain things. He said that before condemning Nee, saints, quote, responded in a very positive way that their spiritual life was wonderful. They were living and absolutely for the church. When Witness Lee asked them how they felt afterward, he said, many times they would weep and tell me that they felt lost and that they had lost their heart. They said that the the Lord was still with them, but that they had lost interest. In other words, their experience after condemning Brother Nee was altogether negative. So I'd just like to point out that Witness Lee says the saints confirmed that the Lord was still with them. The issue was that they lost heart and lost interest. While Witness Lee describes this as their experience after condemning Brother Nee was altogether negative, If the Lord was still with them, it by definition is not altogether negative. And in fact, the most important positive didn't waver. If these saints' condemnation of Nee was in darkness, we would not expect the Lord's presence to remain with them. And if you can believe it, he then concludes, whether the thing you heard is true or not, as long as your hearing has a negative influence on your spiritual life, You should not take it. It was not the saint's business to judge whether Brother Nee was wrong or not wrong. Even a little talk about something negative will deaden you. Many saints went to Brother Nee and repented to him directly. 
So can you see the thought that got applied here? Witnessly said he learned about the two trees, and so the implied concepts he applied are things like the saints are on the wrong tree, or in the realm of knowledge, or in their mind, or caring about right and wrong and not caring for life. Uh-oh. All of a sudden, caring for life, all of a sudden, we don't care for right or wrong, only life, has turned into turning a blind eye to sin and unrighteous behavior in the church. And saints and listeners, there are a couple other big problems with what he says, because Witness Lee's conclusions here are as holy as Swiss cheese. He says whether the thing you heard is true or not, as long as your hearing has a negative influence on your spiritual life, you should not take it. What? Saints, this is the reasoning of an immature child. Discovering the truth that your child has metastatic carcinoma has a negative influence on your entire life, but it sure doesn't mean that you, quote, should not take it. Discovering the truth that a relative sexually assaulted another family member of yours can send you into the darkest of dungeons and wreck you for years but it does not mean that you should not take it. And likewise, discovering the truth that a spiritual leader you looked up to, and I'm guessing looked up to with a little too much blind allegiance, may have had a gigantic moral failure, can absolutely have a negative effect on your spiritual life, but it in no way means that you should not take it. It doesn't mean that you should reject the truth of the situation. Saints, this is clearly manipulation. Our spiritual life is never described in the Bible as a constant incline. Everyone's spiritual life is subject to ups and downs, peaks and valleys, shining lights and shadows of death. We as human beings are neither asked nor made to run from true things even if they impact us spiritually, and Witness Lee's reasoning here just doesn't hold water in that regard. Unfortunately, it once again sounds much more like his own Chinese cultural attributes are sneaking into his purported pure biblical teachings, a culture from the mid-1900s era heavy on deference and saving face, rather than rightfully exposing the evils of elders or ones in authority over you. But this culture is not what the Bible says Christians should follow. How you feel about something doesn't change the facts. It doesn't change the truth about that situation. It is more than a normal human response to weep, to feel lost, to lose heart, and to lose interest. Upon hearing that a spiritual leader you looked up to a little too much may have had a gigantic moral failure. Feeling that way does not mean what you heard is not true. Having those feelings does not mean you should run from the truth and does not mean you should not accept the situation. Feeling that way is actually a good thing because it means you have a sensitive conscience that is grieved by sin in the church and grieved by the hurt and damage it causes so many people. In fact, these things are precisely what you should take because they are of utmost importance for the well-being and safety of those in the church. When the Bible speaks of elders and deacons needing to be above reproach, it becomes critically important whether the things we hear about a leading brother's behavior are true or not, because there are some behaviors that, if true, should immediately initiate the removal of that elder from function. Truth versus falsehood, right versus wrong, and good versus evil are critical matters to take care of in the church according to the biblical requirements for leading ones. When the Bible instructs us to publicly reprove a sinning elder before all, it again becomes critically important whether the things we hear about an elder or anyone are true or not. And by the way, some have what they feel is good reason to believe that the turmoil about Watchman Nee was regarding accusations of sexual immorality. Whether this is true or not, I don't know for sure, and I'm not making a statement about it one way or the other. However, we do know that Nee's ministry was stopped for six years, and it would have to be something pretty bad to last that long. But for the sake of argument, let's use this as an example, because if it were true, it actually is a scenario that would indeed cause many saints to lose heart, lose interest, and weep, just like Witnessly described. So let's use it as a hypothetical, because we actually have a situation in the Bible we can refer to to compare Witnessly's teaching to actual biblical instruction. In 1 Corinthians 5, Paul addresses the Corinthian church, saying plainly what the report is about, 
sexual immorality, the kind that, to use today's language, that just about everyone thinks is gross. And what does Paul say? Does Paul ever say anything like, you should not take this information? Does Paul ever say anything like, you are on the wrong tree? Does Paul ever say anything like, you should not care about right or wrong? Does Paul say, if your hearing this has a negative influence on your spiritual life, you should not take it? Does Paul tell the Corinthians that if they weep, feel lost, lose heart, or lose interest, then they are the problem? No! Paul actually tells them that they should have been stricken with grief. So Witnessly teaches that grief and losing heart are indicators that you are in the wrong, whereas the Apostles' instruction to the saints plainly shows that grief and mourning are a perfectly appropriate response to hearing this kind of thing, and in fact are what should happen and what should be expected. Rather than telling the believers to refuse the truth like Witnessly's twisted interpretation of the two trees produces, instead Paul instructs the believers to act upon the truth and purge the sin from the church. Witnessly's divergences from the Bible keep accumulating the more you look into his ministry with a sober mind, saints. This is important to realize. Because I can keep going. That excerpt we looked at earlier, at the end of it, Witnessly actually says it was not the saint's business to judge whether Brother Nee was wrong or not wrong. Even a little talk about something negative will deaden you. But the Bible says, the Bible, saints, the Bible, in that same chapter in 1 Corinthians 5, it says this, what business of mine is it to judge those outside the church? Are you not to judge those inside? God will judge those outside. Expel the wicked man from among you. Witness Lee says it's not the saint's business to judge and to not take it, whereas the Apostle Paul writes to the entire Corinthian church, telling them explicitly that they are in fact to judge and take action. And by the way, Witnessly said even a little talk about something negative will deaden you. Um, I guess the apostles were some of the most deadened people out there, because it sure seems like one of the things they did the most was to talk about and handle negative things. Saints, if you cannot talk about negative things, then negative things can never be dealt with and are thus always allowed to remain in the church. Saints, Witness Lee is thwarting mature, sober-minded behavior here. Once again, he's keeping you a baby rather than a mature believer discerning good from evil. Witness Lee's teachings are contrary to scripture in a shameful number of ways and a shocking number of places. And unfortunately, the pattern that shows up is that the ways his teaching deviate from the Bible are repeatedly in ways that control you, shut you up, that cover sins and prevent accountability of those in the lead, and produce you as an immature believer with a blank soul who cannot use their own mind to discern anything. And so, in this scenario with Watchman Nee, Witnessly completely skirts around what the Bible says, and instead manipulated the rightfully distressed saint's emotions using a deformed interpretation of the two trees, we should only care for life, to deflect from the truth and actually cause saints who were rightfully bothered by sin to repent to the one who frankly, likely, egregiously sinned. These are the kinds of actions Jesus railed against in the Bible, misusing scripture to protect the status of someone who is trying to cover up the truth of their sin. And what a great way for someone to get away scot-free from their sin without being accountable for it. Claim no one can judge you. Claim that if what you did makes them depressed, then they should ignore what you did. Does that sound like the God any of us know? Is this the environment the Bible shows God created for his church? Nope. And I'll throw Watchman Nee a bone here and say that he very well may have been innocent. His guilt or innocence is not the issue at hand, though. The problem is how Witness Lee's teachings manipulated the saints to behave in ways dead opposite the biblical instruction, regardless of the guilt status of the accused party. Witness Lee isn't saying, well, Watchman Nee is proven innocent. He's saying, don't pay attention to anything, truth or lies, right or wrong, 
Just ignore it because it makes you feel sad. That's the problem, saints. That is not the biblical or godly response any of us Christians are ever called to. This is where twisting the Bible leads us in the local church, covering behavior that should be exposed, potentially allowing sin patterns to remain in the church, shutting down saints with rightful concerns, condemning saints with false biblical-sounding phrases in order to control things for your own benefit, manipulating saints into repenting to someone who probably should have been repenting to them and kept out of the leadership for good, protecting a ministry that in many places teaches the opposite of what the Bible says under the guise of being the ministry of the age and the pure interpreted word. So saints, when the co-workers threaten you with death for reading information and getting knowledge, or for having opinions, or for using your God-given mind set on the spirit to discern right and wrong, good and evil, you know they are trying to control you and hide concerning things from you using a twisted interpretation of scripture that creates a deformed view of who God is. It is so important to discern all teachings and compare them to the Bible. For a church to be healthy, essentially all of Watchman Nee and Witness Lee's teachings concerning the two trees should be discarded. I know this is a big one, but the Bible contradicts almost everything they taught on it. Saints and listeners, Watchman Nee and Witness Lee's interpretation of the two trees in Genesis is one of the teachings that can be most accurately described, without a doubt in my mind, as leaven. Why? Because it is not a wrong teaching in isolation. It's a wrong teaching that ends up permeating all through the ministry and other teachings and practices in the Lord's recovery. It's a wrong teaching that has devastating impacts when it is applied to reasonable situations of concern in the church. It impacts your own daily life. This is the definition of leaven, something impure and bad that works its way through something larger, causing the whole thing to be corrupted, leading to a system of error. These wrong teachings have been used far too long and far too many times to shut down the God-given functioning of saints' minds and shut down saints who desire to speak up according to their conscience. I hope these videos on the two trees in the Garden of Eden have helped some of you listening to realize that we shouldn't shut our mind off when reading Watchman Nee and Witness Lee's ministry, and frankly, sometimes you shouldn't read or take in their ministry at all. On the contrary, if you are going to continue reading it, you should continually run to the Word and hold their teaching up to the light in the Word to make sure it holds water. Don't just take their word for it, because so often it doesn't hold any water at all.